Thistle and Verse, and I'm here today to review The Conductors by Nicole Glover. I received an advanced previous copy in exchange for a fair and honest review. Thank you, the publisher, for that. I'm also excited to announce I'm going to be interviewing the author April 3rd at 2 p.m. EST, so you're going to want to set your reminders for that to tune in and hear her talk about this novel that I really enjoyed. Now, on to the meat of the review. So, The Conductors is a genre blender, to say the least. It is a historical fantasy murder mystery about this woman, Hetty, and her husband, Benji, who live in Reconstruction-era Philadelphia, investigating crimes the police and other authorities don't want to touch. They're used to looking for people who have been kidnapped, runaways, and they used to work on the Underground Railroad, but things become even more personal when a good friend of theirs turns up dead with a cursed sigil carved into his chest, and they have to figure out who did it. So there's a couple of storylines going on here. There is sort of this marriage of convenience subplot where Hetty has married Benji for business purposes, and over the course of the book, she begins to question her marriage and wonder if she knows Benji as well she thinks she does, if there's more to their marriage than just a business arrangement. There's also a storyline about Hetty's sister Esther. When Hetty made a break for freedom, her sister got left behind and she's been looking for her ever since. There's a plot line about the different types of magics that African Americans and white Americans are allowed to practice and someone who is crossing the color line in a magical way. So I really enjoyed this book. I'm not like a romance aficionado by any means, and so this is the first time I'd seen the type of marriage that like Hetty and Benji have, where they've been together for a couple of years, and they're just sort of now starting to rethink their relationship. There's a lot of banter. They're very tender with each other. And I really like their dynamic. Hetty is such a lovable protagonist. Like, if you liked Lizzie Bennet from Pride and Prejudice, I think you'll really like this book because I feel like Hetty had a similar feel to her. She's very opinionated. She's very strong-willed. She's witty. And you also know early on that, like, her judge of character might be a little flawed. Hetty is a very fun protagonist. She's a skilled enough seamstress that she can walk away from jobs that she doesn't want and if she feels disrespected which is like always great to see. It's nice to see a black woman who's so self-assured and has so much agency. She's also just very opportunistic. Like she will lie or be deceitful if she thinks that will help her investigate a case. And she doesn't really have a whole lot of use for social niceties. It's not really in her personality. She's very blunt, which kind of puts her at odds with some of her more high society friends. And so it's funny to see her in those situations And she really likes having an audience. Like, she really likes telling stories, and she'll spin these, like, elaborate yarns about her time on the Underground Railroad. She's also very brave. She's very tactical. We see this in the fight scenes when she has to, like, confront people. I really like the magic system here. The magic system is modeled after the Black Codes, which were a set of laws dictating how African Americans were allowed to exist in, like, the public sphere in the United States. So that covered things like segregation. The white characters practice a type of magic called sorcery. Practitioners have a wand that they use to focus their magic, and they release their magic by reciting an incantation. And then the African-American characters practice celestial magic, and it can take a variety of different shapes, and we see it take so many forms based on each character's strengths. And celestial magic works by using these sigils to summon different guides, basically, different like supernatural beings based on constellations who will do a task. I really like the celestial magic. I thought it was so cool to read about. Like Hetty sews, and so she sews a lot of protective sigils into her clothing. Her husband, Benji, is a metal worker, so he will work it into anything that he's making. By law, African-American characters are not allowed to practice sorcery. There's nothing legally stopping the white characters from practicing sorcery. They just prefer not to. Celestial magic is generally derided as inferior. I really like the star system. I hadn't seen that done before, and I thought it was a very imaginative take. And I also just like how adaptable the magic system was. It allowed for some very creative problem solving. I like the setting. Um, I think they have an outing on the Schuylkill. They cross over into Jersey. 
and they talk about the ferry ride there. And they talk about some of the streets in the downtown area and Hedy's going to and from work. The mystery was both confounding and simple. Like, as we were going through, I really had no idea who I thought the final culprit was going to be. Like, I made a guess and it was completely wrong. And when I found out who had actually done it, I was kind of annoyed at myself that I hadn't been able to guess it. So I'm curious if anyone who reads more mysteries is able to tell who the final killer is. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. There's a lot of red herrings. There's a lot of things to knit together to figure out, like, what's going on and to get a full picture. There's a lot of minor characters to keep track of. Hetty is very sociable. She has a lot of friends. And the friends have like cousins and stuff. And so that was a little hard to keep tabs on. I think two minor characters that stood out to me were Tom and Oliver. Oliver is a Martitian friend who helps her look for clues on any dead bodies that she finds. And he had a partner, Tom, who had been living with him and then left out of the blue. And then there is another minor character, Sai, who would probably be considered trans by today's standards, was raised as a woman and then joined the army during the Civil War, dressed as a man and changed the name, and stuck that once the war ended. I wouldn't describe this as a queer book, but I do like when, even when the plot doesn't revolve around queer characters, when authors are thoughtful in how they incorporate queerness into the work because, you know, that's how the world is. And I especially like reading about that in historical fiction because there's so little education in primary schools about what queerness has looked like historically. I really appreciate it when historical fiction includes, like, the different ways that people have been navigating sexuality and gender. One thing that stood out to me is how close child slavery is to all these characters. The characters are of a generation where they were enslaved for most of their formative years, like teens, late teens, possibly early adulthood. Some of them had wives and families during slavery. Pretty much every single character in the book has been touched by that. Hetty in particular, because she practiced celestial magic, she was forced to wear a collar, which would suppress her magic, and that scarred her neck. And so she has like this lace decorative collar with protective sigils in it that she wears to cover it up. Like, several of the characters met at the Freedmen's Bureau when they were trying to locate family members, spouses that they were separated from after emancipation. And pretty much every character has someone that they left behind. And some people miss them. Some people have moved on from them. They feel indifferent about it. And some of them very much so want to leave everything about their enslaved lives in the past. And sometimes that involves people shunning Hetty. Like the legacy of slavery in this novel is like a ghost, right? Because everyone has some marker of it, either like emotionally or physically in some cases. I think this novel shows how African-Americans banded together to protect each other and guard against white supremacy in terms of people making church organizations to teach African-American students, to allow them to worship in peace, to get them jobs and clothing and housing. I think you also see the more opportunistic characters who don't really see a need to band together unless it's to their own gain. There's a very poignant scene shortly before emancipation and Hetty and Benji are stuck in this colony of runaway slaves and the leader is very nefarious in how she convinces people to stay in this community. I think this novel shows African Americans banding together in the face of adversity and also how that adversity led to demagoguery and exploitation. And this novel doesn't shy away from the fact that African Americans were largely on their own in navigating like this white supremacist landscape. They go to the Freedmen's Bureau, but there's not a lot of funding for it and the resources are stretched thin. And also like acknowledging that even the union who fought to free those who were enslaved, many of them were still very racist, very white supremacist. And there was talk post-emancipation of sending all the African Americans back to Africa because white people in the unions also didn't want them in the country. And so I just really enjoyed this book. It gave me a lot to think about. It had a very interesting mystery and a very creative magic system. I really like the period piece feel to it. Yeah, so there's just like a lot of things to like about this book and I really recommend it. This is going to be out on March 2nd. Do you think you'll be giving it a read? 
What's your favorite historical fantasy? Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, we'd like to stay up to date with me specifically. If you want to be reminded of that interview I have coming up with the author Nicole Glover, you're going to want to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you'll know when that's happening. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.